If you want to take full control of your sales pipeline, you need to try Monday CRM. It's given my sales team more time to do what they actually want to do, close deals. The platform is super easy to use, but it can also handle all of our Roger, most complex- Roger, we can hear your sound, eh? If you want to take full control of your sales pipeline, you need to try Monday CRM. It's given my sales team more time to do what they actually want to do, close deals. The platform is super easy to use, but it can also handle all of our- Roger, we can hear your sound, eh? I don't actually think that's my sound. I think it's going to up there. <laughs> that's so weird. Thanks. <laughs> Now I can't hear you at all. Hold on, Roger. Wait, <laughs> somebody muted you. <laughs> Can you hear me David? now? Am yes. I here? Yeah, we're live. It was that really nice, uh, smooth uh, entry into our May AI uh, session where AIs are already taking over. <laughs> we're now here. And uh, I, I want to say to everyone, because we are on Zoom and on YouTube as well, that anyone who is on here, uh, please, uh, on the Zoom, please turn off your videos because we can see you all at the moment and uh, you'll be much better off if you're actually on our uh, YouTube call as well because that's actually where everything's happening. So um, do be posting in there right now. Do turn off your videos or can the team please turn off videos from everyone who's on here. Uh, and I'm going to kick right into this because we have got a very, very exciting session ahead of us for the next hour. Um, anyone here who is doing anything with teams whatsoever, for your business, everyone here who is a leader in a company where you're wondering how AI is going to be impacting you, and it already is, believe me, uh, what is it that we can actually share with you in the next hour, which can transform the way you're thinking about this next year and uh, the years ahead as we are in this AI revolution? Let me start by sharing my screen, and I'm just going to take you through a couple of slides so you can see what we are planning uh, to cover on our session today. Uh, first of all, going to start by basically saying that we have got two amazing people who are going to be joining me on this masterclass today. And I'm going to be telling you a bit more about both David and Eva in a moment. Uh, we are going to be focusing 100% today on not just how, as many of you I'm sure have seen, AI can be used by freelancers or by coders or by those people who are enthusiastic about ChatGPT and how they can be using it to have their own personal AI. It's actually as much about how the teams now start to harness it. And as I'm sure all of you know, all of the largest tech companies have come out with their suite of AI products in the last month. And we're gonna be actually showing for you what we see as being the very, very best that are out there. Uh, we have got Eva Mansu who's here. Eva has just joined us as our chief HR officer and also chief of staff within Genius Group. Uh, and I'm gonna be showing a bit more about her background in a moment. We've also got David Kasperson. Many of you know that after we had Stephen Covey join us, uh, on our summit last year that we've been doing a lot of exciting work with the entire team at Trust and Inspire. And David Casperin is a co-author of that book together uh, with Stephen Covey as well. Uh, and to give you a bit more background on each of the two people who are going to be joining us, uh, Eva's background has been on the one hand an entrepreneurial background. So she's a graduate of MIT, uh, Wharton Business School, and so focusing very much at how you can build from an entrepreneurial start businesses as a co-founder of Golden Eggs Accelerator, working with uh, a lot of the European startups and getting funded by uh, the EU. Uh, this is basically then moving into larger companies all the way from work service where she was a co-founder and this uh, company became uh, dual listed on the Warsaw Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange. Uh, all the way through to being an advisor for the Polish president um, when uh, uh, she was the policy expert there on uh, social media. Everything that Eva is uh, focusing at is how do you actually now guide large companies uh, to actually be able to use a lot of these different tools. And she's doing that for Genius Group as well, which is very exciting. We're going to see exactly how she's been using AI within the way that we are building our teams. And David Kasperson, as I said earlier, not just the co-author of Trust and Inspire, He's also the director of Speed and Trust, uh, which is the entire uh, section which uh, uh, he and, um, and the team at Trust and Inspire are supporting within Franklin Covey as well, which obviously is a, a very, very large company that is supporting uh, 
all over the world right now as well. And everything that we're going to talk about is about how this impacts the world of leadership as we go forward. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a moment before I go further in the key steps. I'm going to ask both to come join me on here, uh, Eva, uh, David. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say a big hi, first of all. So uh, put on your videos, please. Uh, let me start with David. David, hello. How are you? Hey, Roger. Uh, it's great to be with you again. And yeah, well, thank yeah. you. Good to see you too. I think we've got a bit of a lag, but great to have you on here as well. And uh, Eva, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be with you today. Okay, fantastic. So we've got us all on here right now. Uh, Eva, David, um, I I've got a number of slides I'm going to be sharing. and I know there's things that uh, you already are ready to share in this call as well. But just as a summary for each of you, I'd love to just start with a simple question, which is how are you seeing... Uh, the way that AI is being introduced into the world this year, how are you seeing the impact already that it is having on companies or on leaders? Uh, and is it something which you were expecting to be happening the way it's happening right now? Uh, or are there any surprises? Uh, David, I'm going to start with you. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Probably maybe I don't know what we... Well, maybe one of the things we didn't expect, I think we were looking this way directionally. I don't know that we all were quite prepared for how quickly it was going to come on. Coming off of the, the heels of a global pandemic and all, all of the technology tools we've learned to rely on, uh, you've got a lot more digital natives, a lot more ability, um, skill in this space. Uh, if you remember, Roger, when we started talking a few years ago, um, one of the things that was happening in the leadership space as people were navigating all the technology that was going on, Stephen drew a really hard line between looking at the different skill sets of management and leadership and, and really looking at the idea that we've got to really be great at managing things, AI, technology, systems, schedules, processes, but leading people. And what we were seeing kind of take place is as we got really, really dependent on the technology side, we, we've and we've been doing this for a long time, leaned a lot more heavily into the management side of how we work with others and not built enough muscle on the leadership side such that the management side starts taking off really, really well. And you see things like the great resignation, uh, the great upheaval, all of these things where the, the humanity side of work uh, that's being done is really, really kind of bounced up. Uh, slides just been shared here. This is one of the things, as you know, we highlighted Microsoft as a company who is really focusing on kind of both sides of the equation. You know, obviously developing the technology that they're doing globally, worldwide, uh, and also developing a culture and a, and a human environment of growth that they they, they kind of led a turnaround that started about maybe six or seven years ago. And they've grown uh, like crazy. They've become the second highest evaluated company of all time. Um, but if you go back back one slide, um, we actually got just a few months ago, got, got uh, the ball put to our toe on this because we had highlighted Microsoft as a trust inspire um, organization who was being led by leaders who were balancing both sides of this really well. Uh, and everybody's laying off people. And so the question was asked, well, look, you guys highlighted Microsoft as an example of a, an organization that's balancing both sides of these coins. How is it that they're laying off people as well? And as the headline that you saw was up on the screen, uh, came from Inc., they showed with three words, Microsoft CEO showed that you can lay off 10,000 people with empathy. And what was really interesting is that the three words they highlighted in the article were um, thoughtful and transparent when they moved to let these people go, their CEO was saying something that everybody else could have said as well, but because of the kind of leader he was, because he clearly had done so well on the technology, but he'd also built so much muscle on the leadership side, people believed him when he said that this is where we were going as an organization. They haven't had all the, the, the lawsuits or the pushback that you've seen in all these other large companies. And for an organization their size, is just unheard of. So it's exciting to see kind of the leadership piece we've been talking about laying out at scale that we're working on with our teams as well. So a little bit all over the map there, but it's a, it's a big question. Oh, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I love the way you just, you make it seem to me leadership and management. Uh, and we're going to get more into that because I think that's a really key part to all of this, how we think differently about the two. But that's great. Uh, Eva, how about yourself and what you've seen uh, and, and the shifts that have happened? Yeah, it's a very, very interesting shift because it's been long, long, long years uh, around techies. We've been already like talking about 
it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, it's here. So of course it's been, it's been very surprising once it's actually happened, even though we've been really expecting that AI is gonna, it's gonna like launch, it's gonna take over, but not to such an extent that it is growing in such a amazing, amazing way. And it's expanding on so many different fields. It's not just like AI is smart, AI is like GPT-4. No, no, no. Actually, AI, it's now creating the next growth pathways for the next AIs inside of inside of like this beautiful brain. So the fact that that AI is growing in a very similar way to um what neuroscientists they've been saying. People are learning, so we are having we are having so many different like uh, neurons and like connectors and so on. AI is even better. AI is actually creating the pathways for itself. So that was something that was like super super interesting uh, to watch, but also a bit scary because we don't know where it's going to end, <laughs> how it's gonna how it's gonna take over. Is it dangerous for humans or not? So like those are those are like the topics that are being covered more and more. Because people are like realizing what is actually the power of AI, how fast it's growing, how fast it's self-reproducing, it's a uh, uh, self-mastering. So th this is this is the areas which are actually I think the crucial ones. Once we're talking about AI right now, it's not only what AI can do to help us; it's like what AI can do to help itself and where we fit in that picture. So I think this is the 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 crucial discussion we should be having once thinking about AI, thinking about developing this, there is already like some, some tech leaders saying that this is too scary and it might get out of the control. So we must be very, very smart once thinking about AI. But for sure, like once, you, once you're looking from the user's point of view, uh, how it can help you, it totally revol revolutionizes the way that we are working right now. The tools we having, all of the all of the additional tools on top of the GPT four, uh, all of the tools that help you code, that's going to be like absolutely the area of a total disruption because some of the tech jobs they're going to become obsolete because uh, everyone will be able to talk to a, to the AI and for example like right now you can already have like your web page done from the scratch by AI. You can have your code written, even if you totally do not know how to code. You can have your Excel sheets filled out without spending hours and hours on actually learning how Excel works. So there is like so many great things coming with it, but I would also like put the pressure on, is it dangerous or not? How fast is gonna grow? How fast we're gonna see this, this, this total change when we will start to realize that we actually do not understand what's happening anymore. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I, I know for everyone who's watching right now, there's gonna be something like you that are going to be uh, basically thinking exactly the same way that David and Eva have been sharing, which is like, well, what is the consequence of all this? Where's it all heading? Is it even a good thing or not? Uh, and there'll be other people who are like, okay, give me the next tool. Like, what's the next tool? So I'm going to say that this session we're going to have is going to be for both of you, right? For those of you who want the next tools, we're going to show you what those latest tools are and what's coming uh, and what we're doing in, within Genius Group as well. But at the same time, uh, we are going to cover this bigger question as well. So I'm going to basically just give a bit of a framework and I'm going to come back to both Eva and David with a particular question, which is led by what I'm about to share. Uh, there's a couple of slides in here, um, uh, which are leading on from what David shared as well. Uh, which is one of the big things that people are worried about, which is, well, wh what does this mean in terms of technological unemployment? Like, am I going to have a job in the future? Uh, and we're going to come back to a little bit of that. Uh, and I want to just read this out for a moment as well, because I want to come back to this too, which is where spirit sits in all of this. When you ask people about what it is like being part of a great team, what is most striking is the meaningfulness of the experience. People talk about being part of something larger than themselves, of being connected, of being generative. It becomes quite clear that for many, their experiences as part of a truly great team uh, stands out as singular periods of life lived to the fullest. Some spend the rest of their lives looking for ways to recapture that spirit, right? This is from Peter Sen from the, with this, this whole idea that if you actually are a great leader, uh, you can build teams, you can build connection, and it's all human, or at least we believe it's human. But again, many of us have more connection with our pets than we have with our friends. So the question is, to what extent may we have connection with AI? Is it even a thing for us to be thinking in that way? 
we're already seeing you know chatbots that are actually becoming love bots that are actually becoming your your partner you i'm sure you've all seen uh the influencer that now makes seventy thousand dollars per month as a result of basically having a chat bot that you can actually have of her being your uh, girlfriend for a dollar an hour, a dollar a minute. I mean, what's going on in the world at the moment is really, really interesting how quickly this is changing. However, a couple of things just to be thinking about how we each think about this differently. We already within a Genius Group have made a distinction because a lot of people are saying, oh, the, you know, humans are going to have a big competitor in AI. It's going to take your job. It's going to like, and maybe it's going to take over all of us with the singularity, et cetera. Uh, but there's two kind of like truths here which I want to share, which we believe in. First of all, that HI, which is what we call human intelligence as opposed to artificial intelligence, HI's biggest competitive competition will not be AIs. It will be other HIs. It's always been, right? Like human intelligence against human intelligence. How do we become smarter versions of ourselves? How do we work in teams to be more effective than our competition, right? How do we do it in such a way that our competition want to come and work with us and be collaborators? But similarly, AI's biggest competition will not be humans. It will be other AIs. Believe me, AIs are going to be focusing more at being able to basically figure out how their biggest competition, which is other AIs more powerful than them, how they can compete with them. And they're more likely to be collaborating with humans to make that happen than by trying to figure it out for themselves. Uh, and we believe that actually the real key to teams and the real key to education itself uh, is if we want to be a leader of both, it takes the combination of two, right? When you see someone on Twitter or on YouTube posting about something they did with AI, Usually what we're amazed by isn't the AI itself, it's the fact that a human was able to harness it in a particular way. And if someone shows you how to do something amazing and you don't know how to do that yourself, that's not just the AI doing that because you've got the same access to AI that they do. It's the fact that they're using their HI with the AI and they're creating something new, right? Which we call human, superhuman intelligence, right? SI, like this idea that superhuman teams, superhuman learning, that we can actually bring the two together and the, the top competitors you're going to have is not some AI team trying to take over your job or your business. It's going to be a human that's actually working together with AI that is able to accelerate itself. Uh, this kind of brings me to a particular uh, topic which I've been sharing for the last 10 years, which is pretty much where the world is right now today. And it was the horse manure crisis of 1894. This was when the Times of London actually published an article predicting that within 50 years, every street in London would be buried under nine feet of manure. And this was a mathematical. Uh, calculation based on how much manure was already getting dumped on the streets because everyone was riding horses, horse and carriages were everywhere. And they're like, this cannot continue. And as you can see here, the very first international urban planning conference, it happened in New York in 1898. And it was all about the horse manure crisis. And after three days, everyone was just so frustrated that nothing could be done. They actually quit the entire conference early. Like, this is what happened back in 1898. And so the whole point here is if we're looking at the issue the way it is, like, Horse manure, 1898, human jobs, uh, 2023. It's, it's the same thing, which we think this is what the problem is, but that's actually not the problem at all. And of course, back there 100 years ago, it stopped being a problem within 10 years because everyone started driving cars and the horses just weren't there anymore. And so in exactly the same way that if you were running a horse race and someone still showed up in a car in 1905, there's a very good chance you wouldn't have let them join the horse race because you say, well, that's cheating. Well, that's the same as universities or, or schools actually banning ChatGPT, or it's the same as you know companies basically saying no, you you can't be basically like you're meant to be putting this report together. You can't just stick it through ChatGPT and get it done in five minutes because you've got two days to get it finished. And so this is basically saying for those people who actually say no, we should we should keep the horses. Uh, then as a result of that, no one's going to move to the cars. Uh, this is the this is the Bugatti most powerful car in the world, fifteen hundred horsepower. Right, basically, same four wheels, but now instead of one horse, you've got 1,500. Uh, we are going to see 1,500 like manpower men and women, right? Basically, able to do the the work of 1,500 people because they've now got a machine that they know how to drive. Uh, and of course, you would never show up at a car race or a motor race in a horse, right? So the whole point here is we're going to see companies and teams that are going to be on this side, and there's going to be, and they're going to say, look, if you're going to be with us, you need to know how to use AI. You need to be able to drive the car. And there's going to be people on this side saying that we don't believe in the car and we think it takes away from humanity. And unfortunately, it means that they're going to be left very far behind. And that's just the truth of where we're going right now. And so the real key thing is, well, what does it mean to basically be the car versus the horse? What does it mean to be AI powered versus non-AI powered? And, and where do we need to go today? 
And there is a link uh, which is here uh, on these slides, which we'll share with you later, which are 100 of the top experts, influencers, uh, which we can actually uh, have a look at a little bit later as well. But my question, which I'm going to come to um, to both of you, uh, came up about six years ago when I was speaking with the, uh, one of the board members of Adeco. Adeco, uh, just like uh, the company that Eva was running, uh, it was very much around human resources. So everything to do with recruitment, training. Uh, and up until then, they had said that their biggest mission was to be able to put the right people into the right jobs. And so from that point of view, their mission was very much people led, which is like, we want to make sure everyone has employment. Uh, what then started happening, even like six years ago, where companies started coming to them saying, listen, we know that you can get robots and computers to do the job cheaper, faster, more effective than the people you're placing. So are you going to help us to actually solve our productivity issues, uh, which means you might not even put a person in place, you might actually put a computer in place instead or a robot in place instead. Um, are you going to do that for us or not? And they had no capability at that point to be doing that. So they had to have an offsite retreat. They all went to Italy, the entire board. They spent like a couple of weeks there and they just brainstormed out, are we as a, what we call a manpower company, are we here to give people jobs or are we here to make companies more productive? And what they ended up deciding was that their main mission was to help companies be productive, which meant that they set up a robotics department, they set up a, a, a machine learning department, uh, and now they're helping companies on that level. And by the way, if they're taking the other level, which is we're just going to help people get jobs, uh, they may have still be successful, but it would be a very different looking company from the one that actually moved towards much more supporting the management to make the company more productive. Um, so I, I have that question, um, you know, David, this is going one step further in terms of what the role of a leader, in your view, should be, and does it differ from a manager, whether it's in a small company or whether it's in a corporation today, um, how should they be looking to redefine, in your view, uh, what they should be focusing at, uh, given that before productivity equaled people, uh, and now it basically equals AI or person. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I like your, I love your analogy with the horsepower. Um, I'm reminded of the quote from Henry Ford uh, when he was, he said, if, if I had given people what they wanted, they would have told, or if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have told me they wanted a faster horse. And right. The idea of, of, of a leader having a sense of vision um, for where an organization is going or what they might be able to accomplish is pretty significant. Um, the management piece is putting all the, all the pieces together, but uh, we're doing some work right now with um, uh, B-Lab, who, uh, you know, they're, they're leading kind of a resurgence right now of organizations who are in the past the definition of a corporation might be that that its job is, especially a publicly traded co corporation, might be that the job of a corporation is to make money, and there's value in that. And there's there's sense in that. We all want to we all, all want to succeed. Um, they're pushing the idea of, of what an organization does past beyond just economic success, but the idea that we are all part of this this community and environment where the idea is that what you just hit um, progress and moving forward. The, the evolution of humanity is inclusive in that definition. And so when you're looking at an organization and how we grow, leader looks at the jobs that needs to be done and the people who do the jobs, the idea of separating management from leadership is understanding that if I'm working with a group of people and I'm also have, have a stewardship or accountability or responsibility for the AI or the technology tools that we're going to use to succeed or to partner, to collaborate with other people, I've got to recognize that those people that I'm leading and serving they're the ones who are getting the job done, not me. And so I, I need to be able to provide them the tools, the environment, the growth, the comparison that you just made the, of, of having kind of made the idea of people fighting with one arm tied behind their back if we're not going to be leveraging these, these tools as they're coming. But it's the, the balance of keeping the human intelligence piece um, distinct and useful so that the technology is serving human intelligence, not the other way around. Um, the temptation is the artificial intelligence grows and gets better and better and better is to be more heavily reliant on what that is instead of keeping up with it and continuing to innovate and grow um, and go down those paths. So I, I think the, the balance piece will continue to need to be there. But if we lose sight of the humanity piece, we'll have organizations that are filled with lots and lots of things, but not very many people. And that I think is going to be a losing battle in the long um, in the long haul. 
Um, I think we we are able to become better, to become a better community. Just what you're doing here with Genius Group, where you're leveraging all this insight, all this creativity, all the, the this differing ideas and opinions in all of these environments, as long as we use the tech to advance that, as opposed to using that to advance the tech, we just got to keep our eye focused on the ball, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. And uh, one thing which always came up when I was, um, whenever I meet up with a group of, of, of entrepreneurs and, and leaders, and, and I ask them, how, how many of you believe that you're currently operating at a small percent of your true potential everyone everywhere is like yeah for sure like i could i could i could be 10 times more productive i have the spirit to be 10 times more productive than i am um but i may not have the tools to do it and we're actually now in a position where if someone is like as a leader thinking well if i want my team to be 10 times more productive do i need a 10 times bigger team or do i need to just basically like empower my team to be 10 times more productive and use these tools that just simply weren't there before like to be 10 times faster by being in the car instead of the horse uh, then that's a whole different leadership skill because it means leaders now need to know, well, what are the tools that enable people using AI and using what's showing up now to be able to do that, which is which is um, which, which becomes almost like not even the opportunity of a leader becomes the obligation of a leader to actually know how to be able to do those things, right? Yeah, yeah, we, we would call it a stewardship um, because I can provide my team with all of the technology tools that we need to collaborate, but it's sometimes the temptation is the technology grows. The temptation is to think, well, what's holding us back is that we may not have access to the most cutting edge technology and tools. What we find in most teams and most organizations, especially as the, the playing field is being more and more leveled as the access is growing, it's usually not the technology tools that are keeping people back. It's, it's usually the trust component. It's not, am I just giving people the, the resources that they need, but am I actually entrusting them to do their best as opposed to, am I just trying to program um, more people to do the things that I'd like the machines to do? That's that's where the, the world's kind of become blended. We always like to look at it and, and, and acknowledge that there's a difference between the program and the programmer. And if we put too much emphasis on the program, it's easy to kind of become assimilated into the programming. And then we look at those that we lead and serve as part of the program, part of the program, instead of recognizing that if I've got three people on my team, I've got three other programmers who have the ability to influence everything else that we're doing. And I think that that insight is is one of the easiest to lose as the technology piece gets stronger and stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and even on, on the same subject, I mean, before you joined us uh, in a full-time role, you actually took uh, this, um, you took the company through an HR audit. And in that process, AI was a very big part of it. And this was already at the very beginning when chat, you know, with GPT-3 and ChatGPT just came out in January. Um, and so you were not just using it, you were also recommending that everyone gets trained up on it. Uh, you were sharing basically different tools that are available. So on, on the same topic of um, you know, what happened to ADECO and, and how they had to redefine who they were and how they were supporting leaders, what's your view uh, and, and, and what we're putting in place across the whole company now in terms of how we all need to be thinking differently as humans uh, because of what's happening with AI right now. Mm -hmm. I think that this example with Adeco, it's a, it's a very, very good example of how we all need to redefine how our companies are gonna be working. Adeco is a very, very like vivid example of like redefinition of who we serving, who is our, who is our customer. And I think when it comes to the jobs when it comes to how how we're going to redefine what our target audience is, uh, what our client is. Adeco decided they're going to be concentrating more on the companies, concentrating more on providing uh, the tools, providing robots, as you said, and actually like care more about the customers, which are not employees, which are employers. And I think I think there is one gap in that in that thinking because. Of course, like the main purpose of any work agency, any any employment agency or outsourcing agency, human 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 capital agency, it's to care about the employees as well. And I think that this is where the education companies are gonna uh, fall into the picture. I think the education companies they're gonna take over this part of caring about employees. And I think education is a key word into development in here because more and more the companies are being automated 
for example, if you look at the um, um, like car manufacturers, if you look at all of the quality control systems, they are pretty much like already almost 100% automated. In work service, I've been also working, having like the one of the daughter companies, which was uh, uh, which was actually uh, specialized in quality control. We already like years ago noticed that this whole shift is happening, that we are automating more and more processes. At the end, we had just one controller looking after the whole production line. And uh, I think even, even now, humans are less and less needed in this kind of positions because with the sensors with the cameras with everything you can always like better like detect any any anomalies uh in the products so even like the human eye is not longer like the main tool that you're using for any uh any false detections any any in any missing pieces in any kind of like a product that you then selling uh to 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 your uh to your clients but uh when it looks at who needs to look after the employees for them to grow and for them to be more blended with AI, to be faster, to be more efficient and to be more skilled, that's not going to be work agencies. That's going to be education companies. That's why I'm like super excited to actually join uh, Genius Group because this is this is something that is like a natural, uh, uh, natural like growth pathway for me as well, personally, because I've been always caring a lot about employees, day of growth, and so on. But we've been using very, very not AI uh, 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 driven methods of education, uh, educating our employees by by just like teaching them in a very old school way, like at school. And now, thanks to the to the AI, thanks to the tools, we can actually accelerate their growth path, not by two, not by three, not by ten, but like 100 times. Uh, during the audit, which uh, Roger mentioned, uh, I was concentrating very much on how we can make our teams much better and much faster by, by, by making them more blended with AI. Uh, for example, like I, I mentioned, uh, um, I mentioned that there is a lot of productivity tools, like for example, uh, Slides AI, which is like, one of the one of the one of the uh, apps, one of the programs that I recommended to use, which really takes uh, uh, this whole like pain of the shoulders of the employees who do not know how to actually like pre make the a PowerPoint presentation or any any kind of presentation. They spend uh, hours and hours on actually like trying to design it, trying to uh, trying to uh, uh, find the right button, maybe on the left, maybe on the right, and like putting all of the things together. And now they can just tell AI what they want to achieve, how the final product, final presentation can look like, and the AI does everything. Then you can just say like, oh, please correct, like change the color, uh, change the fonts, like then everything is just happening by normal conversation with the chat. So this is, this is amazing. And this is making uh, the whole process much faster. Uh, in here, Excel, Excel formula bot. Uh, normally, once we've been training employees on Excel, that was usually like five days training. And they still made many mistakes. They still were like feeling lost even after training. They still needed a lot of practice to actually like master Excel formulas. And, uh, and that was like a very painful uh, process for pretty much every newcomer. Because uh, let's be honest, Excel is not very like user friendly. <laughs> so with this AI tool, you can just tell what kind of formulas do you want to have, and it it flows, it just goes, and you're like, okay, that's super cool. Like I don't need to actually like master that because AI is helping me to write the formulas. Cogram, that's another great example of a of a of a of a of a, a productivity tool, uh, and. Uh, but like th there is a lot of different different like task management uh, uh, apps that are helping with the uh, virtual meetings. Uh, this one, for example, tracks uh, uh, action items, so you don't need to have actually your PA sitting with you uh, during the calls and uh, putting the notes and then like change like sending the the, the 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 tasks to your team now everything can be automated now everything can be uh uh flowing much easier 
uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to task delegation. And uh, this is something that is also very good. In here, we do have like a lot of different examples. Uh, for example, like OpenAI is working on Dali. We have Midjourney. There is like a lot of different productivity tools. Also in the in the HR uh, fields, uh, there is a lot of very interesting tools. For example, tools that are helping um, employees write their perfect resume, like taking bullet points of of their. Uh, a LinkedIn profile, for example, and putting together very appealing, uh, very very appealing uh, 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 resume, CDs, and so on, which are very often just tailor made for where you want to apply. You can use those tools and say, "I want to apply to Microsoft. Look at my uh, CV. Look at my um, social media. Look at my LinkedIn profile, and please prepare like a perfect." Tailor made uh, uh, CV that I can send to Microsoft, for example, or to any other company. So change the wording, uh, make me look more young spirit or more like a, speak more like a professor. You know, like you can you can do all sorts of like very cool things. And this is this is within like seconds, just one click, and it's done. This and this is this is the power of AI. This is super amazing. Well, what I love about the way you're you're talking about it and thinking about it is up until now, most leaders have treated each person as a one horsepower person, right? A one person power person. And the idea that you can say to someone, because of course, you know, everyone would love to have an entire army of people, a team of people to support them in all the areas, but they don't have the budget to do it, right? So then it's like, unless you have someone who who has the management capability of managing multiple people and and all the complexity that comes with managing humans. If you actually said to someone, right, you've got a you've got a zero budget team, but you now can have a team that's going to look after your presentations, your spreadsheets, you know, your your copywriting, all of those. Build your team, and here's how you build your team. And your team can be entirely AI, or it can be you know eight people AI and two people humans. Um, but that whole aspect of realizing we're no longer limited by either time or money, uh, just imagination actually means that we have to be far more challenging in the way we think of ourselves as leaders and how we think of ourselves as self-leaders or delegators by understanding that before you would only really teach delegation to someone who actually had a payroll, whereas now you can teach delegation to everybody, even if they have zero payroll, because they can be using AI in a far, far more effective way and training changes because before you have to train people on things like Excel and PowerPoint, whereas now you don't have to do that at all because they can have their own assistants to do it. And it it, it is a very weird, strange concept to think we're going back to a slave nation where before it's like i'm just going to have a whole bunch of people working for me and i'm not going to pay them and we're actually in exactly the same situation again but different uh until until robots get their own rights uh where we actually have got free uh slaves effectively but technology slaves that are able to do a whole bunch of different works for us uh, but our mindset is so different that we're not ever thinking that we can have help without paying for it that we're forgetting that it actually is possible to have help for free um, but do it in a way which is ethical and do it in a way which actually allows you to be a better leader. Um, and this is one of the biggest challenges, I think, for most people is it's a mindset shift as well as anything else as well. I'm going to add one more context to this uh, and, and come back with the next question here, because, of course, most people, the biggest issue they'll usually have right now is overwhelm. Uh, and by the way, for everyone who's watching this on our YouTube live stream on our masterclass, do make sure you book up with the team to just have a personal call with us. Because our metaversity, where we actually guide each person one by one, cuts out the overwhelm. It means that we're guiding you on your specific task. And I will show you just exactly how we're using AI to do that as well right now. But to give you basically a way to cut down the overwhelm a little bit, let me just share the fact that when I was saying that we have this um, uh, the, this Twitter list, uh, this Twitter list here, I created this. It's got over 100. Uh, it's free, right? So you can just go and just use the link. And if you go in on every single day, you'll see the people who are the top 100 plus people who are right now posting on what is going on and what the latest uh, advice is, what the latest things are you should be looking at, uh, what are the latest examples of AI. It's all on here day by day. This is my newspaper that I look at every single day, and it keeps me up to date with all the latest things because they're happening so quickly. And you can see if you click on the top one here in terms of members, this is everyone from Elon Musk through to Sam uh, Altman through to all of the top um, uh, uh, team members of Google and Microsoft. Uh, you know, Google AI, all of them are in here as well. And so basically you're getting all of their information, you know, here's Satya Nadella, like everything he's posting, 
right? So this is basically all the top people in all different areas. Uh, and I really highly recommend that you do follow this. Um, at the same time, uh, this also can be overwhelming because there's so much information every single day, every single minute that's coming out on what's going on with AI as well. Uh, and so just to narrow it down, one thing really important to be thinking about when you're thinking about AI um, is to be thinking about the fact that it's not just about what are the different tools you can use, it's the fact that all the tools actually fit into three different areas. And these three different areas do have a match on leadership. Uh, the three areas that you're going to see all AI focus at is in either prep or prompt or produce. So what are, what are these three different things? I'm sure most of you have heard of prompting, because if you're going to use something like ChatGPT, you need to learn how to prompt, which is basically how do you ask it particular questions, right? But there's a part before prompting, which is what happens with all of the best tools, like the ones that Eva just showed you, which is the prepping, right? So the prepping is where you're actually, like someone somewhere is saying, right, this is what the use of this AI is going to be. Here's the objective, here's the inputs, here's the boundaries. So when I spoke with Simon Khan at Khan Academy, he had created a whole team to prep their Khan Amigo to actually guide in a particular way. And then it becomes far easier to do the prompting, right? And the third one, by the way, producing, is where generative AI comes in. It's like once you know what you want to produce, it's one thing to then go off and produce it yourself using human intelligence. But if you have a way to go from text to video or text to 3D or text to PowerPoint, that the AI itself can then go and do that job, that's when it ends up doing all the production for you. And then that actually saves a massive amount of time as well. So whereas these two can help assist you, this is where you become the AI's assistant by the third one. And all of the different tools you see are in these three different areas. So to give you just one little taster of what that looks like, I'll just do a quick live demo. If you take something like ChatGPT, which is here, ChatGPT has actually had very little prompting, uh, sorry, prepping. It basically says, look, just start as a, a, as a language model. If you, have, if you can't say anything, just don't say it. Um, but, and, and it has parameters of what it can and can't say. That's the prepping part, uh, which OpenAI put in place. When we put together our G AI, which many of you already are on the wait list on, and if you haven't, make sure you get your course so that we can actually get you one of these as well. We have prepped it to know who you are, what you're about. If I log in with Genius U, and let me just put these side by side, if I put this on this side, this is Jeannie, who's been prepped to know who I, Roger Hamilton, is. And if you use that, you do the same. ChatGPT has not been prepped in the same way. So you can see that Jeannie shows up saying, hi, Roger, what would you like to ask me today? Well, let's, let's imagine I go to ChatGPT and I say, uh, do you know who I am, right? Well, pretty simple question you'd want to ask if you met someone new at a cocktail party, right? If I ask the same question of uh, Jeannie AI, Right? You see here, it says, I apologize, but as an AI language model, I don't have access, blah, 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 blah. It's not actually showing any of the info in terms of uh, who I am or what the details are. Um, this one here, okay, as always, is a live demo, right? The whole thing just stopped working. It's <laughs> thinking, here it goes. Yes, Roger Hamilton, you are the founder of Genius U, entrepreneur's all, entrepreneur's, it knows all about me. It knows who I am. It's telling, look, it's even saying, you know, forward thinking, your skills include cartoons, doodles, mentoring, one take videos, and two board juggling. <laughs> and so it goes on. So it's got a sense of humor as well, right? But it's being my friend, it knows who I am because we've prepped it to know who I am. And why that's important is if I say, um, I have a presentation uh, to put together uh, based on my talents and passions, uh, what uh, would you recommend is the best way for me to split the tasks between me and a team, right? So if I just said that, and I haven't actually ever asked this question before, so I have no idea what it's gonna say, but if I put it on this side and also put it on this side as well, you can pretty much know exactly what's gonna happen on this side, right? It's actually saying, well, when you split, here's a way to do it. But it's even started by saying, well, maybe you wanna go and identify your strengths and passions first, right? Because it doesn't even know what they are. Assess your skills, right? Well, maybe you wanna go do that as well. So it's being very, very general about what it's doing. If I wanted to prep it by going and giving out a whole bunch of information about who I am, it can do that, but that's not very helpful, right? Um, whereas on this side, it says, based on your talents and passions as a creator, so it already knows I've taken the Wealth Dynamics test. It already knows that I'm a creator profile. You're great at coming up with new ideas and concepts. You're also skilled at communicating ideas through cartoons, doodles, one take videos. So it already is repeating back things it knows about me. Therefore, it would be best for you to focus on the ideation and communication aspects of the presentation. For the other tasks, such as research, data analysis, design, you can delegate that to a team. You can look for team members who are good at those tasks and who complement your strengths. For example, you can look for someone who is good at research, data analysis, blah, blah, blah. Hope this helps. And if I said, okay, that, that, that sounds great. Uh, and I'll just do a final part. Um, uh, where, uh, what event uh, 
is come up where I could meet these team members. I could even ask it directly, who would the team members be? And it would actually look in Genius U and find out because you prepped it that way. But if I just did that, and then I just said, hello, what is the answer to that? And I do the same over here as well. We know what's gonna happen in ChatGPT side. It's gonna say, as an AI language model, I am pretty clueless because it hasn't been prepped, but it's now saying, go to industry events and all this general stuff as well. So you see, some, if you don't have the right prepping, then you're not gonna have the right prompting. So to begin with, go look for the different apps and the different programs that already allow you to do this. Like here, it says straight away, okay, well, here's what you can do. Go to the Glo uh, Global Entrepreneur Summit that's taking place, go to the uh, mental mastermind. It's actually recommending the same mastermind that we're talking about doing here, right? Go to the mental circles. He's even a link to actually go to it. So it's being very specific to guide me as much more of a, of, of a friendly guide going forward as well. Now you could say, isn't this more like a mentor leader? Isn't this more like what David was already talking about in terms of stewardship? All right, does that not mean that every leader should not be themselves a pilot of their own AI where they can become a better steward to guide people more effectively? Uh, where I as a Roger could have like multiple Rogers that everyone can have their own guide uh, so that they are not kind of saying when I kind of get some more Rogers time because you're going to get a better value, value for me as well. And is it possible for you as the leader to actually have an AI leader that every single person has 24 hour access to as you grow forward as well? So David, I'm going to come back to you because I, I mean, I, this comes back down to the fact that all AI does link into prep, prompt and, and produce and, and each one requires interaction with ourselves as well. Uh, and back to this whole point about how leaders themselves can think differently, both of, of team members being leaders, but also they themselves could be team members, right? In a different way, um, you know, how you might have already started seeing this play out in the way you're working with some of the companies you're working with and, and the work you're doing with Stephen right now. Yeah, there's, we, a few years ago, we started to look at some of the hats that we wear um, in an organizational setting. Uh, well, not just organizational setting, just in our lives. Um, and we were looking at kind of two contrasts because we all, and we all play these different roles depending on what we're working on. Um, we tend to either be acting as consumers where we're uh, reaping the benefits of technology, of other people's works, our, our entertainment, for example, um, the, the list like what you've curated on Twitter, where I might be a consumer of that information and I learn from it and I, and I grow and I kind of sponge it in. That's great and that's helpful. The Where that's most helpful is when that helps us to become on the other side of the coin where we're, rather than consuming, where we're creating, where we're adding, where we're being generative, we're adding our own genius into the work that we're doing. Um, what AI is kind of positioning a lot of organizations for is in the role of being both a creator and also a curator. Um, Consumer, not quite as much. I mean, we do we we have to do that as, as we learn. But the extent that leaders and employees inside of organizations are taking are leveraging these tools to lead, and and I love you hit this uh, a few moments uh, into what you were sharing um, on the responsibility side. Is that leadership is no longer really about your position or your title or your role or or how many people or bots or leadership is a choice. And so the way that we interact with our technology, with the AI, is going to is, is a question of are we leading, are we curating, are we creating, or are we just kind of consuming and jumping on? This is the dark side of the technology where people say, well, that's going to make people or our jobs obsolete. Is people, you know, if I don't have to do the work, if I'm just going to go on there and, and type and ask questions and get some some, you know, the machines doing the creating, it's going to be a short. Uh, span for those of us who kind of go down that route and are just kind of taken by the technology and just maybe lose some of our, some of our creative muscle um, because we use it as a crutch. Where the flip side, what you're talking about, where you're going with this is to really leverage these tools such that they're additive to the, the organizational strength, to the leadership strength, the partnership strength that we're seeing in other people that we work with as well. Um, I think there's one one challenge that you'll see as this continues to grow. You know, if I look at a team of people, I might start to think, well, you know, I've got a personality conflict with these two other people on my team, and it's really a lot easier for me to just navigate over to the tech side. And so I become more dependent on that, but then I lose everything that those two other two people have to gain and have to offer um, if I'm not hitting that side of it uh, as well. So I, again, I think the balance is going to be hard, but the extent that we choose to lead is a choice, not just whatever the function of our role is, 
that's where you'll see people growing out. I love the story of um, Eric Yuan, who's the, the what we, you know, we're using Zoom right now. Um, you know, he worked for a, a legacy telecommunications company for years before he started Zoom. And when he started Zoom, the reason he started Zoom was he didn't feel like he was being trusted inside of his own organization. He had all these ideas and thoughts and and the insight for the the the, the system that we're now operating on. But he wasn't being given the latitude to experiment, to try, to go, you know, to, to, to use again his creative genius. And so he thought, well, I've got a laptop and an internet connection, so I'll just go out and do this. And I think as the tools become more accessible, we're going to see a lot of this entrepreneurial spirit rising up from people who are looking at a, a task or a goal and just decide, you know, I, I, I could just do this myself. The best stuff we're going to see is going to come out of people who are operating that way, but who are doing so together. That's why I think events and things like these where we're gathering these minds to, to look at problems through this new lens is so important, but it is, you're right, it's going to be the people who choose to lead with this as opposed to just be reactive to it and, and consume and consume and consume. Absolutely, absolutely. And if we can get um, Eva back on with David, I'm going to take a few of the questions here before we get onto our Shine Awards at the end of this uh, session, because uh, it's been such a fascinating conversation and we are right at the midst where every single month we're actually uh, giving uh, a front row seat to what's happening and how quickly it's moving. And uh, of course, if, if you're part of our metaverse, you'll go back to the past recordings where I've done this as well. Please, everyone do post down whatever your number one word is uh, when it comes to AI and the rest of what's going to happen this year, this decade. Uh, are you excited? Are you scared? Are you cautious? Like, what is your word? Post it in the chat right now. And as you're all doing that, I'm going to come to some of the uh, questions that we had in here as well. Uh, I've got one here. Um, let me just check it here. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, someone was asking the question, well, what is the uh, data security impact of AI tools, right? Like, you know, the fact that we're putting all this data into all of these different tools and where does confidentiality sit? Where does trust sit in all of this as well? Um, I, I'm gonna, so this isn't just about how, how do we treat data, is how do we treat trust within this situation? Does trust actually end up reducing? Does it get better? How do we look at that, right? Um, Eva, what's your thoughts straight away, like in terms of uh, teams that are embracing AI, do they have more that they need to fear about it or more caution they need to put in place of it? Or how would you look at that? When it comes to, uh, to the teams and how we operate as the group of individuals, I think that for sure we should be trusting that our productivity and the way that we work together with each other can be much better, more efficient. Also, uh, it like if you're doing your job much faster because you have all of these tools like at your disposal, then there is more time to have actually human interactions as well. Because we are just talking about how do I uh, work with my AI, but like the way I look at that is like how do I work with other people that are working with their AI, so they produce faster some effect of their work, which leaves more time for like human to human reflections, uh, human to human interactions. So I think that not necessarily we should be thinking in a very linear way. It's me and my AI and we are producing some effect which we are putting on the pale of other effects. It's no, because I did this part faster. I can I can reflect more. I can brainstorm more with my colleagues who also had their uh, job done faster. So, to me, it's creating more opportunities for uh, human interactions. Even though it's it's not very logical at a first glance when you look at that, because we're just like speaking about oh me and AI. Where where is my humanity going, and where I'm where I'm standing now. What I think is also a very interesting concept once we're discussing this and uh, what David said about where the things are going uh, in, his, uh, in his eyes, I think the concept of UBI and the development of, uh, of AI is also a very interesting thing because more and more countries are saying, okay, with all this growth of AI, robots, and all of these jobs like becoming obsolete, maybe we should introduce universal basic income. So with the UBI, if you are like freed of any 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 work, any need of earning money because you just get the money for being yourself, how great can we become if we do not need to have like this very 
low paid jobs, like going to the factory and I don't know, like packing chickens or doing any other thing that does not require your growth. If you would be paid anyway, if you would be able to support your family and like do not worry about your uh, electricity bills and so on with the AI, who would you become? How would you spend your time? How would you become a better human? So I think once we're talking about this, once we're talking about leadership, this is a big role of a, of a global leaders to actually think what happens later, not only what happens on the pathway, what happens later once the robots are already in place, once AI already took these jobs, who we become and how the leaders can, can actually help every individual to uh, live to their full potential. Yep, absolutely. And 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 on that point, David, when I, when I come over to you to, to really give you your comment on the same, you know, question to 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 what extent we need to be thinking about trust differently. There is a second question. I'm going to just fold into this as well. It's more kind of a comment, but it basically says, look, if if we this is from Arthur, if we share trust between employees as much as we already are on AI, we can win the game day by day. There's definitely uh, a lot of um, apps that are showing up where and and there's definitely a uh, a, a big move towards people going, oh, if the AI is not going to judge me when I ask it questions about me or help it guide me, I'm going to be more honest with the AI about what I'm willing to share because I'm not having the fear of rejection, et cetera, et cetera. And so as a result of that, uh, they go, oh, well, maybe I can share more, right? Because I'm actually getting good feedback from this. And so maybe I'm going to show more with my boss as well. So there is that question, to what extent is it not only we have to be different with trust, but to what extent it could be that by bringing in this new intelligence that could be less judgmental to us and more forgiving, we ourselves become more human in the same process as well. What, what's your thoughts around all of that from a leadership point of view? Yeah, I think I, I think there's I think there's some merit to that. Um, at the end of the day, a lot of what the a lot of the questions that the AI, AI uh, aspects will answer for us, and a lot of what we've talked about on our call, it, it, in most of I think what gets discussed when we bring up AI is is really the what. Um, it can do this, you know, lots of questions that would be led with a what, um, where I'd love to make sure we maybe leave off on is really looking at the why, um, because what you've, you've, the, the community that you've built of people, of, of entrepreneurs who are here, um, that certainly there's an element that we want to succeed. Um, but if we look at the way that we navigate our lives and how technology tools from, from the wheel on up to what we have today, have made that easier. We all start from a place of uh, survival mode where we're just, we really are just trying to have the bare minimum that we need and, and have our needs met and take care of. When we get to that, we then want to move in uh, from, from survival into stability where because of our, our needs are taken care of, we actually start to be able to branch out beyond our, our immediate and urgent needs. The idea of moving from stability, we want to then move to success. And we, you know, the older we get, we define that term in all sorts of different ways. Um, too often, though, if, if I'm looking at the idea of AI to be a pathway to success, the challenge is it'll be the same, the same uh, problem that was faced with, with the London issue of, well, look, what could we do if we had cars or, or you know, you roll back the time timetable a couple hundred years, what will people do with all this free time where they don't have to go out and do you know, all the basic chores? Well, we've got more time, but we also got more stuff going on. The idea of success does bring an element of, of, of ease, but when, once you achieve that, and Roger, I think you, we've had this discussion before, uh, once you achieve success, what we really want to get to is significance where what we do, it's not so much the what, it's the why we're doing it in the first place. So we move from survival into stability into success, but really, really the key for these goals is to get us into a place of significance. And to the extent that the tools help us do that, if we keep our, our eye there, that's what I think will make all the difference. Bill, I'll just leave you with the, the there's a quote I love from The Little Prince, uh, where it says, if, if you want to build a ship, you don't go drum up the men to gather wood, divide the work, give orders, and all of those kinds of things. Instead, you teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. That's the significant piece. The success would be building the ship. And again, the tools will help us do that quicker. But the significance that most of us are really seeking for, those tools will help us get us, get us there. But we won't get there without the relationships, the human side, the meaning side, 
And again, I, 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 I keep hitting that drum just because for me, the more I learn these things, I mean, my kids know these tools a lot better than I do, it seems like on some of these kinds of things. Um, but we, I think we've all got a long ways to go and not losing the why as we really look close at, at all the what. Absolutely. I think that's I, that's what I love so much about what you and Stephen are doing with Trust and Aspire is this all about how do you move the whole nature of leadership from transactional to transformational. And we are 100% in a world today where, where not only is that more and more of an opportunity because of these tools that we're having, which are themselves moving from transactional to transformational, but also at the same time where uh, that becomes an obligation, that that's why we're here, right, is to actually be uh, clearer and clearer on actually tuning back into the spirit of why we're doing what we're doing. I think that's super exciting. Uh, and on that note, I, I want to say, first of all, thank you to both of you for all of your amazing input. Um, we have got uh, the links that we're going to be dropping in here. I'm going to be dropping in a link also uh, to a video, which I highly recommend everyone watch, which actually is our first move towards narrow AI to general AI. And that basically is the move from GPT to auto GPT, right? So you see in there that you've now got the ability for an AI not only to be helping you, but to actually create their own AIs. And then for all those AIs to go out there and create their own work. And it's, it's pretty mind blowing how much this has all moved within 30 days since our last call. So imagine where we're gonna be 30 days from now. Um, there was also questions in there around, uh, can we get links to the uh, investor summit, which is coming up? We obviously have that. Um, I've also got in here, a number of links when you actually download the slides, we'll give you the links to the slides as well. Uh, and you'll see on here that basically all those slides, all of our different partners are using AI within the way they're building out their platform. We have some incredible partners and tools that we're using at the moment. Uh, you know, if you haven't used Elementor, which basically builds up all your sites, it's now basically become AI enabled in every single area of what you're doing. Um, and similarly, in terms of all the different tools, in terms of how do you actually set up uh, all of your videos, using Murph AI or Synthesia, you actually can actually have um, all your videos actually created without actually having to sit in front of a camera to do it because you've got your own AI professionals working with you. Well, these are all the things we're doing with our partners right now and all the tools we're building within our platform so that you actually have got your own uh, coaching one-on-one uh, -on -one with every single one of your uh, students as you're working through as well. This here is a link to the actual Genius Month Diversity gives you a chance to actually then book a call with us, get organized with us so that we can actually guide you and have you part of our team as well. And with that, I'm going to be bringing on board now Michelle for the last couple of minutes to share about our Shine Awards, which we do every single month. And this is all about how do you ignite your own genius and shine a light on others. And it is about how do we bring the high touch in with the high tech, where it's celebrating uh, human intelligence alongside artificial intelligence. And so, Michelle, are you there? I am here. Hey, Roger. Great presentation hey, from you and our speakers. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's your biggest takeaway from this whole session that we've just had with uh, with Eva and David from your side? My biggest takeaway is that we can still have a trust and inspire organization by using AI and making it better, but still look after our people and make sure that we we are like you always say, beam your human. You know, we we still have that ability to bring up that humanness, um, even though we have all this amazing stuff at our fingertips, right? That's fantastic. Awesome. Very, very cool. All right. Well, on that note, uh, take mm -hmm. us through the nominations and the finalists for the Shine Awards from our community this month. And then who is our winner for the month? Awesome. So let me share my screen. Super excited to do this. Um, and I'm so glad that everybody's here today to see it. So we always do this every month, um, and uh, it's a great opportunity for us to acknowledge our, our customers, our clients, our community. And um, we go through nominating our partners, everybody who's in this. There's two prizes. We do a monthly winner, which is one of our um, masterclasses in the Wealth Dynamics or Investor Dynamics space, some tokens, and you can join a conference, a live conference. And our quarterly winners have a little bit more benefits, which we just finished last month. Um, but the nominations this month are for Kathy Shepard, Ruby Johnson, Katrina Kong, and Diane. Um, and... Uh, Really, the nominations come here. Kathy and her business um, have really worked super hard. And she joined us a long time ago, Roger. I think she joined Crystal Circle probably when I joined the community. 
um, when we were doing PC, and they've just been uh, named the Leadership Skills Consultancy of the Year in 2023 in the New Zealand Prestigious Awards. And um, one thing is about Kathy and her team is they come every week to our Genius Accelerator programs, which is included in what we do. And uh, they've been delivering, showing up, sharing their numbers, and actually driving results. So now they've got a whole new program going where they've got everything working on AI, and they're using what we're teaching. So I wanted to acknowledge the fact that they do that. Uh, from Ruby, uh, Ruby Johnson. She's a founder and CEO of Institute of Holistic Psychonomy. Um, Ruby actually was in Crystal Circle many moons ago and then came back and then came back as a partner. And she's now working together with Yvette, um, our leader in Australia, to run some socials in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And one thing is she's tragged along year after year, comes back to the programs, keeps doing it. Perseverance here is unbelievable. And uh, she's actually consistently driving about three and a half thousand dollars into her business every month, uh, just on one of the new programs, because she brings in so much on the other stuff. And so her websites and everything are finally getting into a space because of technology. So that's great. And Katrina, Katrina is um, one of the uh, ladies who works with Super X, which is um, our Vietnamese partner. And um, yeah, what they've been doing is they've been just branching out a little bit and making sure they've got everything in place. And she came onto the GAP program and really they finally got the right audience. They're finally bringing in the events and they're bringing in the 60K and they're bringing in the 80K and they've got more people registered. And this 12-week cycle and the GAP program that's finishing now, she generated close to $90,000 through the 12 weeks, which was really awesome on a new program. So that was, you know, best in showing up, stepping up and doing it, which is awesome. And last but not least is Diane. Um, she's Chief Learning Officer at the Learning Force. Diane has also, you know, been around for a long while, but uh, she's come back into the space and she started doing things again and shows up every week for the programs. And she's also managed to generate about 6,000 revenue on the little bits that she's been doing. And she's finally getting into a rhythm of success. So this is amazing. And I always want to share these things because it's really good to see people having success in this time. And so, lo and behold, the winner is Katrina this month. So, yeah. I'm super proud of her and our team will be in contact, Roger. So that's me. Are you still here? <laughs> I am still here and a big, big, big congratulations. So please do post down to everyone. Uh, congratulations to everyone on there and also to Katrina for winning. And uh, also big thank you, Michelle, for all the awesome work you're doing together with the team on uh, looking after our community. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you again to Eva. Thank you very much to David. Really, really appreciate your time on the session today. Uh, and look forward to a very exciting adventure coming up in the coming months as well as AI and human intelligence continues to evolve as well. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. Catch you on the next session. Bye-bye.